Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable podcast, we got a smaller group. We're missing a few, but that's not to say we don't have a really phenomenal group, starting with the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. I, I think I'm a little on edge, but uh, you know, our, our conversation prior to getting started today has me feeling a little tension, but uh, I'm good. I can tell you, you know what though? I can feel that tension. And I think a lot of it could just be the caffeine jitters because we're both drinking the same coffee now. And I'm feeling the same way. My, my blood pressure is, is, is up a little bit, but this is what Scott Todd and Mike Zeno do to people. So it's just something that we have to, you know, kind of breathe through. Um, Mimi Schmidt, the terrorist hunter. Mimi, good to see you. You too, Mark. It's nice having the most feared woman in the country on a podcast to back up Eric and I when those two get a little crazy. They're trying to suck me back in. They are. We'll talk That's a little me. bit later about the, the topic. Um, so everybody's like, what are they talking about? We've got... The breathe in the mailing, the breathe out the marketing, the Zen master, Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? And, you know, if you'd asked me five minutes ago, I'd say, pretty good. Now I'm doing great. I just had five minutes of laughing. I just feel rejuvenated. So I'm doing wonderful. Well, fantastic. I'm, I'm glad that you're, you're feeling rejuvenated based on Eric and I and our cortisol levels being elevated. And then last but not least, the brain, the professor, you know him, you love him. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm doing great. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Before we get into today's topic, which I think is a really phenomenal one, I just want to mention our sponsor today, Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Go up the mountain of land investing with the Sherpa, Scott Todd. He will get you up there quickly, safely, efficiently. Not only that, we've got a skin in the game guarantee. That tuition ain't gonna cost you nothing. You're gonna make that make back that money, 180 days or less, or we're gonna refund you. How about that? Learn more, go to landgeek.com forward slash training. Get on a call with the Zen Master or the Nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. Thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Okay, Scott Todd, what's our topic? for the roundtable discussion today? Well, we've, we've seen a lot of people lately uh, opting to create custom offer letters in LG Pass. All right, so it begs the question, like what, what comes in LG Pass is the default offer letter, right? It's the offer that Mark, you use, I use this, other people use it. But what we've seen is that these offer letters, some of them are beautiful. They're beautiful, right? Like all this HTML code, all this stuff, logos, signatures, all this stuff. We've also seen them with uh, multi pages, two pages, one like couple with a cover letter and then the offer letter, you know, some that were six pages. It's like they wrote a book, like you get a cover letter and then a whole like five or six page contract. So I'm wondering, like, am I doing it wrong? by having a one page offer letter with no introduction, no, no letter, I'm just mailing and getting like, I don't know, a 1.7 response rate or buy rate, by the way, 1.7 buy rate, or am I doing it wrong or am I missing something here? What do you guys think? Well, let's start with the technician, Eric Peterson, what are your thoughts? Well, um, first of all, I, I will say I have customized these offers for many of our coaching students. So um, th there are certainly elements of that that uh, you know people feel is necessary for whatever reason. You know they got, they have to have their logo on there, or they need you know something removed, what have you. Um, but ultimately, my opinion is that the one-page offer works best. Um, we've seen it over and over in the lifetime of our business. Um, and, you know, obviously it's what works for you guys as well. Um, I think doing multiple page offers, um, honestly, it's, it's a waste of money. Um, it's already, you know, costly to mail as it is. 
why do you want to throw an extra page in there and pay even more money to send out those letters? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think the one page offer is great and it works for us. Okay. Very good. Um, Mimi Schmidt, what are your thoughts? I like the one page. The only thing that I like better than the toolkit offer letter is the LG pass offer letter because it has the counter offer option. And I found I had a better response with the counter offer option. That's the only customization that I have done to my offer letter in four years. Okay. And for those of you listening that don't know what LG pass is, it's our automated system to automate your mailings, the whole process, the contracts. If you want to learn more about that, just go to langeek.com forward slash resources, get your first month free because the best way to learn something is to actually do it. There's training videos and really, really amazing. Um, all the improvement, it's going to save you tons of time. Anyways, um, I think that's really uh, an interesting insight, Mimi, is the, the, the toolkit letter, which I've used forever, but the LG pass offer letter that has the counter. So I'd be curious, what percentage would you say counter you on your offers? I would say, gosh, like 80%. 80%. And are they normally reasonable counters? Are they meek counters? Or are those like, I want a million dollars? No, I would say most are reasonable. I would say two thirds of those are reasonable. Of course you get your outlandish ones here and there, or you get ones that are way high, but those folks end up coming down after a while because they really are interested in their, in selling their property. So, you know. All right, well, let's yeah. rewind back to Eric. Eric, are you using the counter or are you using the, the strict, this is your offer, take it or leave it? No, we actually don't have a counter on ours, um, but people will, cross out our price and, and write in their own from time to time. Um, usually when that happens, those are the more crazy ones um, where they want, you know, $100,000 for the property or what have you. Um, but sometimes they're reasonable, um, maybe a little less frequency or, or frequently than Mimi's seen though. Okay, great. It's good to know. Zen Master, Mike Zeno, how about you? On our offer, yes, it's in our letter just for that clarity. Um, and I l love what everybody said so far. You know, I look at it like this, like there is some pride. I understand what Eric's saying with the coaching clients. They sort of, you know, it's nice. You want to have your, 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 your what identifies you, you know, your label, that pride. And I, and I, and I, and I get that. Um, I guess I look at it like, I'll make the comparison is when I get up to do uh, my work in my business every day, I could wear sweatpants or I could wear a suit. But either way, I'm going to do very well. But I just might like to feel of that suit. I might want to sit down and feel like, hey, I'm in the office. I, it makes me feel good. There's a certain pride. Or I might just get up, not comb my hair, not brush my teeth, throw on some sweats, drink a cup of coffee, and uh, do the business. So, you know, it's going to work just as well. So, you know, it's just how much effort you want to put into it. And there's a lot of things in this business that deserve your effort. So if you really want to, great. But I don't think it's necessary. And I wear the sweatpants, by the way, not the suit. Okay, so besides your questionable <laughs> hygiene, I, I, I mean, so you're, you're basically making an analogy between the feelings of what it's like to have a short letter or a long letter and the yeah. feelings of getting dressed Yeah, because in a certain at, way. It, I don't get like, it. All right, I'll be real. Look at, you put all this information to your letter, you add pages, you customize, and it's like, oh, look at this, right? It's like if you're going out to a party, it's like, check it out, all right? Look at me, look at my offer letter, hold it up and then look at everybody. But, or it's like, hey, I'm, I'm in sweats. You know, it's just a simple little one-page offer letter. It's not dressed up, it's not unique, but it gets the job done. So I go to work in the morning, right? And I could put the suit on, or I could wear my sweats, but either way, I'm gonna get the job done. It's just one's gonna cost me more money, and. It's going to, you know, a little bit more, but I, maybe I like that. So I'm not going to, what I'm saying is I'm not going to judge anybody by their choice of apparel or by their choice of offer letters, but I don't think it's necessary to go the extra mile. I, so I, I get it. Now, now the analogy makes complete sense to me, Eric. <laughs> well, I just wanted to add, like, I think one of the most important things, you know, whether you have your logo on your offer letter or it's 10 pages or one page or what have you, like the most important thing 
is to get those offers out and not let something stop you from doing that. So just because you don't have your logo on there or your signature or whatever it is, like don't let that stop you from mailing because without mail, you're not going to get deals. And like Mike's saying, like either way, you're, you're likely to get deals, but if you're not mailing, you're not going to. Yeah, no, that, that, that is the fundamental point. And that, you know, that's why the Zen masters is Zen master and breathe in the mailing, <laughs> breathe out the marketing. But if you're not breathing in the mailing, you're dying. Got to breathe it in, which is a whole other topic, by the way, Eric Peterson. I was uh, just the nostril, thinking that. The nostril breathing. Um, Scott Todd. Naughty. What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, I, I mean, I kind of laid it out to begin with. Like my own thoughts is, look, I use the one page offer letter, right? Like it's simple. It's to the point. It's in your face because ultimately I want to cut and dry. I do have the counter offer on there because I do find that people will counter. It's you see the offer to me is a opportunity to open up discussion. So I put an offer out there of a thousand dollars. They put an offer of 4,000. And in my world, we're going to be closer to a thousand, like very close to a thousand, maybe 1100. Okay. So we're going to be pretty close to, to my end of the scale as opposed to your end of the scale, but it's an offer. And what I found is like, I've, I've tested it all. Like I have, I have changed the offer letter. I've put it on color paper. I've, done everything the response rate doesn't change it it is what it is it might vary a little bit but it's it is what it is the, the most important thing is showing up in their mailbox and and being there because on any given day on any given day you never know how often how often someone's gonna need money right like they it's like a credit card offer the offer comes in the mail you look at it you're like i don't need a credit card day toss 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 and then all of a sudden you show up one day, there's an offer in the mailbox for a credit card, and you're like, you know what? This is the perfect day because my car broke down. I need a new credit card. My other one's maxed out. I think I'll take that credit card. Or I might see something on the horizon that I want to go do. Or maybe my life has changed, and it's the same way with our offers. They might get them, throw them away, throw them away, and then all of a sudden you hit the mailbox on the day that they need something. And then when they need it, they'll accept your offer. So it's really a numbers game more than it is a beautiful thing. And to me, I'm not trying to impress sellers. I'm really not. A seller relationship is a transaction. I will never, ever, ever deal with them again. They might have more, more than one property, but the, the odds are it's a transaction. It's a transaction. I just got to keep it going. My buyers on the other hand, I do want a more better look and feel from them. I want a better experience from them, but the, the sellers doesn't matter. It's a volume thing. Yeah. I, I love what you said. I love what everybody said. And I think it's really important that everybody understands that when we're buying the property, it's a transaction. When we're selling the property. It's a relationship. Those are two very, very different things. And then from a marketing 101 standpoint, right? You've got to always be tuning in to W I I F M what's in it for me. Okay. No one cares about your background. No one cares about you. You know what they care about? Them. And they care about how much you're offering for that property. They don't care where you come from. They don't care about your biography. They don't know you. They don't like you. They don't trust you. You know what they do like? Your offer. Or they don't like it. So why spend the extra mail? Why go through the extra step of it? You want to dress in your suit and make you feel good? No one cares. They don't care. They care about themselves. And this applies to everything that you're doing. If you're emailing your list, every time you write a sentence, when you finish that sentence, think to yourself, who cares? Because if it's about you, they don't care. I've been in business since 2000. Who cares? No one cares how long I've been in business except me. It's a nice little ego stroke. You know what they do care about? Can I show them proof that since I've been in business so long, people have had a good experience working with me because that applies to them. That they can get their arms around. Can I close quickly? Can I close efficiently? Am I trustworthy? Those things apply to them. They don't care how long I've been in business. They don't care what I show up to business in. They don't care why I'm selling property. They only want to know what's in it for them it's a really, really important concept to wrap your head around, especially when you're new, because you want to look good. 
You want to be professional. You want the good looking logo and the good looking website, which then goes and matches with your good looking offer letter. No one cares, especially the sellers. They just want to know what's in it for me. You're going to buy my property at that price that you just offered me or not. Was that too harsh, Scott Todd? I think that's it, man. Like it, it, I, you know, Mark, um, Tate, Tate and I will talk often about uh, this topic and it's really one that I think a lot of people miss is that this is a simple business. It really is a simple business. Okay. It's about buying one thing. It's land. Now the size might change. The price might change, whatever. It's about buying a piece of land at, at what you think is a fair price. And then it's about selling that land at some price component that's higher. And what's going to make it more valuable is what you're offering there, which is owner financing. So you're out there, you're looking for the land that's not available for sale. You're solving someone's problem. You're getting the land. You're now selling this land at a higher price because you're offering owner financing or a cash deal. That's why people will do it. You're adding value to the transaction. And then you're rinsing and repeating. What most people want to do though, is they want to make it more complex than what it is. Like it, they think it can't be this easy and easy. And I know firsthand, easy is boring. Don't you think like, I mean, it's boring. This is a boring business. It really is. It's exciting getting the money, but isn't it boring? It's the most boring. That's why you won't see us on HGTV or the DIY network. It couldn't be more boring. It's dirt. I mean, so, so all of a sudden we start to think, oh, it can't be that easy or that they're not accepting my offer because, and you know, I always, I always tell my kids like, look, when you start changing things in your life, you can't change all these things at one time because then what solved the problem, right? Like you put something out there into the world and then if you have a problem, you tweak it, right? Like it's not major changes. It's about, okay, look, we got a problem here. It's not working, so let's make one change and let's look at what happens. And so basically business, if you're running a business, you're running a lot of almost like a hypothesis, right? Like you're, you're trying to decide like, okay, well, if I do this, what produces here? If I, if I change the color of the letter, can I get a higher yield? Or if I handwrite my offer letters, can I get a higher yield? But you got to give it time to work through the system. It's not an instant thing. So Oftentimes what happens is people, they, they want to change all of these things. And then next thing you know, they're like, well, nothing's working. Well, nothing's working because you change too many things at one time. Change slowly and get better, right? Like get, find the things. And if it doesn't get better, go back, revert back and then change again. Yeah, absolutely. And I know this stuff drives Mike Zeno crazy when people get on a call with him and and they're, you know, asking you like, you know, this question and that question. Uh, Mike, how do you help people kind of stay focused on the recipe when they, they kind of get in their own way? Well, that's a great question. Well, I think it may dial back to something Scott was referring to. And in fact, you know, I know he was joking, but he's being completely honest. It's a boring business. And, but that serves us well. That's why it's repeatable. That's why it's redundant. And I think that uh, when people get off track, it's similar to what Scott's saying as well. It, it's that they may be trying to do too many things at once. So he might be talking very specifically uh, in his, what he was just saying about like awful letters, tweaking them slowly and surely if you want to do that and play around with that. But, um, you know, you, you could try to do too much of your business, like try, try to outsource the whole thing at once or try to, you have to take it like you always say, Mark, right? How do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? You have to slowly work through these things and when you're focused on one thing you have to do deep work on that thing you can't be you know so maybe you have a day set aside to work on some marketing or another day for intake whatever it may be whatever part of the business but i think people go sort of off the rails and 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 so on and so forth when they try to do too much at once try to implement too much at once try to change too much at once on a, on a macro scale not just a micro scale that scott was talking about and that just leads to you being overwhelmed. I mean, at the end of the day, you're either going to feel, and I've experienced this, and, I, and at the end of the day, you're going to feel satisfied. Like, wow, that was a good day. I did great things. And, 
or you're going to feel overwhelmed, but you have complete control over that because if the beginning of the day, you, you just put one of two things, either you don't have any goal for the day. You just kind of react to emails and so on and so forth, or you just have too many things in place. In the, the day, you're going to feel exhausted. You're going to feel, even if you did some great things, you're going to feel like overwhelmed. But if you have a couple of specific things, you plug them in to a timeline and you deep work on them, you're going to feel wonderful. And you're completely in charge of that. That's the crazy thing. Like you're completely, so how do people get off rails or out of, out of uh, get overwhelmed as they try to take on too much. They don't have a narrow set of goals and uh, they don't just chip away at it. So I think, how do they get back on track? You do that. You kind of bring them back in. Okay, well, let's do one thing today. Let's work on this or that. And uh, fortunately, our business is easy to do like that. There's only five parts. I mean, there's micro components in each of them, but there's only five. So you can kind of dive in as necessary. Yeah, I was going to ask Mimi, I mean, you know, with your coaching clients, Mimi, do you find that this is a thing that you've got to kind of help them make something less complex? Like they, 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 the natural inclination is to make this more complex than it needs to be. Not just mailing, but the whole business. They have a tendency to think that it's much more complex than it is and need to be reminded to just do it. Just do it. Stop thinking yeah. about it so much and just do it. Eric, how about you? What do you, what do you do? Yeah. I mean, I think that oftentimes uh, coaching students or, or just really anybody getting started in this business tends to, um, they get sidetracked and focus on the wrong things. You know, we talk about mailing and marketing. Those are the key elements of this business. And if you're not doing those things, you know, it's not going to work for you. So if you're spending your time building your website or, I don't know, um, any number of other things, creating your logo, et cetera. Like those aren't the things that are going to sell property. Okay. So that's why we tell you to focus on mailing and marketing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And you know, I think there's a, there's a principle involved in this with, with business and systems. It's you can, a simple system can become more complex, but if you start with a complex system, it'll never become simple. It just won't work. So I think I'll do a, an email about that for next week, something like that. But I thought this was a really good topic and I'm glad uh, Scott Todd, you brought up that, that cost, that custom offer letter and hopefully everybody's getting a lot of value from it. But you know what a lot of times people get the most value from? Mimi Schmidt and her tip of the week. So Mimi, what is your tip of the week? A website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? I've got this website, easygift.com, video to JPEG, and I, it's so cool. It was actually uh, suggested to be by one of my coaching students, Chris Balder. And what you do is you go watch a video, see what part of the video you want to make pictures out of, right? Let's say you need more Facebook or Craigslist pictures because you've used everything your photographer gave you, and you just upload it, and it gives you a, an opportunity to put from what second in you want it to start to what second you want it to end then you press a button and it creates all these pictures i uploaded 10 seconds of video or i uploaded the video chose for it to do the first 10 seconds it created 100 pictures cool yeah that's a really good good uh tip yeah i thought that was cool any any uh other thoughts i'm sure Mike Zeno has something negative to say because he takes awesome things and finds the negative. I was kind of surprised that the pictures look pretty good too. I thought they'd be pretty, they, the quality would look bad, but they're actually okay. Yeah, Scott Todd, your, your silence is deafening after that little, uh, that little shot I took at Mike. No, look, uh, I think it's a good, I think it's cool. I mean, a, a video is obviously uh, thir 30 frames of a still image. So, you know, one second is. So that's uh, a cool way of getting some pictures. All right. Well, very good. So um, I thought this was a great podcast and great roundtable. Before we get to our bonus talk, so we can kind of circle back to why Eric and I were so upset with Mike and Scott. Um, we just want to remind everybody that the only way that Mimi's going to keep doing the tips of the week is if you do us three little favors, you got to subscribe, you got to rate, you have to review the podcast, send a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the latest wholetailing course, how to double your money 30 days or less. That's normally $97. So please do that. 
and um, it really helps us. It's, it's the best gift that you can give us if you're getting value from the Roundtable podcasts. Are we ready to do this? One, two, three, let, let it freedom, freedom, freedom ring. ring. All right, Told you it was better course. without Zano here. <laughs> Wait, you beat Bossman. Oh, you Bossman. Oh. Hey, Mark, uh, we have a cool update coming for LG Pass. You want to see it? Yes. All right. Absolutely. Check this out. So um, this is actually ready to go live. It'll probably go by the time this video comes out, this should be live. But ultimately, let me share my screen real fast with you guys. Oh, I can't because it's disabled. Uh, so I'll let you make Oh, me here, let me... Uh... How do I do but this? But basically what the developers have been working on is a couple things. One is one of the requests that we get all the time is, okay, I got these VAs, but I don't want them to see the entire business. I want them to stay in their lane and I don't want them going all over the place. And, you know, we've pushed back on that for a while because our VAs have access to everything. But even though they don't you, do everything. By the way, you can, share the screen. you can share the screen now. Okay. So basically what we did was – uh, the team went out and they basically um, developed or created the, um, you know, the, the ability to add permissions for users. And the way it works is you come to like to your name up here and you click on view users. So when, this is a test account here. And when I view users, you'll see that I've got like Jimmy Johns in here as one of my users. His role is a user. I have two roles, ad administrator or user. So the administrator, the administrator runs everything. They can add more users and they can do everything. They have like the, the God feature, if you will. Ultimately though, I can come in here, I can give permission. So I can say, hey, this guy does not have access to the organizations. And if you look, it's, it's geared towards this, organizations, mailing, due diligence, closing, properties or inventory, sales. So basically you can restrict and you can say, hey, this user, Jimmy Johns, well, he doesn't need to get into my organizational information, change the organizations. And he's only doing mailings. And so basically you can come in here and just do the mailings. He will not have access to the other stuff. Now, in, because the due diligence requires the mailing and because the closings requires the mailing, well, if you're going to give closings, well, you got to give them the other two before it because it's all in one tab together. But essentially you can come in here and you can block out and also you can tell which companies they have access to or which organizations they have access to or not. So that, that's a, a change that's coming, coming real soon. Now, what we're doing here is the reason that we did that is because we're also laying the groundwork for this. You'll see that there's already a button here that says issue check. And it's been there since day one of LG Pass. But it was always a checklist item. Like, yep, I issued the check, whatever. However... What we're doing is we are laying the foundation now so that somebody can come in here and we can tie in LOB, our LOB accounts, to a bank account. So LOB offers the ability to print checks. You'll be able to come in here, hit issue check, and bam, as long as you're an administrator, you can hit issue check so that now someone has to come to you and say, hey, will you issue the check on this? So now you get to say so of your checkbook. But then you hit the issue check button, the check goes out, you get an email from Lob with the check information that you could forward to the seller if you want to say, hey, here's the check. And also it would go ahead and add it back down here as a record saying, hey, that the check has been issued. So that is the change like that, not the check piece, but the permissions piece is one of the things that's going live. The check is coming in the fall, but this is why we're doing it, right? How do you like that one? I, I love it. And the fact that we, you know, we keep adding more and more features, more and more benefits and lowering the price is amazing. Yeah. So if you haven't yeah. checked it out yet, check it out for free. If you're using something that's overpriced, that is doing the exact same thing that our system is doing, come on over, go to land, go to uh, the landgeek.com forward slash resources, get your first month free. You need help exporting your stuff. We'll help you. Well, no wait, there's more. There's not, more. Not, there's more. The next thing that people absolutely complained about, and they didn't complain. They were just like, man, I hate this. And I got to be honest with you. I hated it too. You know what it is, Mark? It's what? that when you go to upload your list somewhere, 
Okay, like, I mean, we've used other versions of this system as well, but what happens is you upload your list and there's always a mapping screen that says, oh, okay, well, this one's got to go here and this one's got to go here. And this. so you spend, I don't know, minutes matching these columns up. And so what the team did was they created an algorithm. And what the algorithm does is if you're using, um, if you're using, um, a spreadsheet, for example, if you're uploading a CSV file that already has in it the column headers, like you should right here, right? So like you'll notice on this one, it says property state, property county. These are all the headers that matches to the fields. So what happens is when you go to upload this list, let me show you what happens in the future state. Let me show you what happens like once we turn the key or make this live this week. What happens is you come over here, and you're gonna import a mailing. So we're gonna come over here and import a mailing. And we're gonna hit choose file. And when we go to choose the file, let me choose it real fast. It's over here in the bootcamp folder. Oh, I gotta get up there that I just passed it. There it is, it's that one. And it's this one that says LG pass. There it is. So I'm gonna upload it right now. And when I do, what you will notice is that the map Oh is my gosh. Here are already pre-populated. Now, what is it populated with? Well, it's populated with the, um, with the data from the Excel. So the Excel columns are over here, but because it's, it's a direct match, because these columns here match to these, this is what Excel had, this is what LG Pass has. Because it's a direct match, it already lines up. Now, wow. we know that not everybody's gonna like wanna use the template that we recommend. It's just a fact. So what we're doing though is people will tend to use the same template over and over again. So what we did layer two of that is we have now used in or the ability to save the user's normal preferences. It's kind of like what they did last time. So now all of a sudden you go to upload the list, like you don't have to think about it. I mean, I would think about it because it could, you could get it wrong, but like, you know, to me, I would go in there and still make sure that it's, it's right. But this is one less like choose, 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 choose. I hated it myself. I know users hate it. This is like, we are making the process to mail even faster. That's cool stuff. Oh, saving time. So geeky. And the price Genius. is going down. And the price is going down. Genius. Genius. I love we, it. We, what kind of econ, uh, economics major did that? Well, you know, clearly one that wants to dominate the market, <laughs> right? There you because go. look, th there's, there's nothing wrong with being a Honda Accord or a Toyota Camry. It works, it's reliable, and it's reasonable. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot like that razor that you use, that Honda Accord razor. Okay, oh, now, we, now we're getting, now, now, we now it. it's over. Now we're getting into it. Okay, <laughs> I so do want to say this though. While I, while I have this opportunity, I do want to say this though. Eric, uh, I don't know what he was thinking when he did this, but he did share with you in the chat, like because we were having this whole razor conversation like we do like, I don't know, every week. He did share this link right here that shows that your razor, your razor is the, the supply single edge razor is like the best one for, I don't know, single, single edge injector razors, right? Like it's saying right. how great it was and everything. However, I want you to focus your attention on my mouse. See my mouse right here? I, and if I, I see it, yeah. Towards the right, most popular products purchased through our website last month. What does that say? <laughs> Yet again, no, it, the crowd has knowledge. It has the best razor. The crowd is intelligent. You can't argue that, Mark. Look, McDonald's sells billions of hamburgers every single year, and the crowd is right. They're delicious. I love McDonald's. That being said, you offer me Burns Steakhouse or McDonald's, I'm going to pay the extra money. I'm going to Burns, okay? Well, okay. That, that ends this discussion. I think the podcast is now over. Uh, all right. No, no problem. Um, but Mimi's husband is going to solve the debate finally for Father's Day. 
Uh, by the time this comes out, the next round table, we will know definitively what Dave Schmidt prefers, who is arguably a man, the, the, the man's man, okay? This guy graduated Air Force Academy. He's a pilot. If you haven't met him, I mean, he's freaking cool, okay? He's what every guy aspires to be, which is probably why Mimi fell in love with him, right, Mimi? Definitely. But ultimately, at the end of the day, a man's man's going to know a good razor from one that's average. He's going to know that the really one really building this up is it. Oh, and, I, and, and if he and if he likes the the Merker over the Get Supply, I will I will live with it. I will be at peace with it. It's fine with me. But that's how confident I am, because I tried your guys' razor, and it didn't even do the whole point of the job is to cut your hair on your face. <laughs> didn't do it. <laughs> so I feel like when he gets them both, he's got to do like half. With okay. one razor and, and the other half with the other. And then Mimi yeah. can be the judge. We'll feel it. Exactly. Exactly. Well, well thanks, everybody. And uh, we'll see everybody next week. Thank you.